everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today we're going to take a look at LIGO and how it demonstrates earth curvature. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, LIGO is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. No wonder they just call it LIGO. There's actually two of these machines. One is located near Livingston, Louisiana, and the other is in Hanford, Washington. Now these things are enormous interferometers. The arms on these interferometers are about four kilometers in length. They have a maximum deviation from straightness in inertial space of about five millimeters RMS. That's exceptionally straight for a device this size. This is a satellite view of the Livingston site. This arm is identified as the Southwest arm and it extends 13,100 feet. That's about 2.48 miles or four kilometers. The second arm also extends 13,100 feet and it's referred to as the Southeast arm and it forms a nearly perfect right angle with the first arm. The laser beams are fired through tubes that are about four feet or 1.2 meters in diameter. And those tubes are made out of stainless steel and they're held at a vacuum level of about 10 to the minus ninth tor. So in addition to being some of the straightest things we know of, these vacuum tubes are also some of the largest vacuum chambers we have on Earth. But we're not really interested in the tubes or the lasers for the purpose of this discussion. This is one of the arms at the Livingston installation. And what you're looking at is the concrete enclosure that houses the laser tube. Inside it looks like that. This is the laser tube itself, the vacuum tube. But notice that this tube sits on a concrete pad as does the outer concrete shell. And it's that concrete pad that we're interested in. Here we see some cross-section views of the arms. And you can see the outer concrete enclosure shown right there. That's the laser tube. But what we're really interested in is this concrete pad. You see it again here and in the picture on the left. And the elevation of that pad has to closely match the requirement for the tube itself. So if we know the elevation of that pad, we'll know pretty much what the elevation of the tube has to be. You can see here the adjustments that were provided to allow the elevation of the tubes to be set properly. If you go to the website you see listed, and I'll have a link to that in the description, you'll see this page. And if you go to the tab that says Civil, right there, and click on that, you'll get a list of these drawings. Now the one we're going to look at first is this one. It is drawing LA-C-001 Rev 2. And it looks like this. You'll notice on these drawings that you'll find a key plan right down here in the lower right corner. And that key plan tells you what section of which tube you're looking at. That cross-hatched section is what this drawing pertains to. So you can see this drawing starts at the vertex, goes out 1400 feet, and it gives us elevations every 100 feet. So if we go through the drawing set, we can pick out these elevations. For the southwest arm, the elevation at station zero is 64.12 feet. At station 6500, the elevation is 63.00 feet. And at station 13100, the elevation is 64.09 feet. And the same thing applies to the southeast arm. In a separate document titled Precision Alignment of the LIGO 4-Kilometer Arms, using dual frequency differential GPS. And I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. On page eight, you'll find a paragraph that describes the plane that these two arms form. And it essentially is telling us that that plane is tangent to the WGS-84 model at some point within the triangle formed by the two arms. Now I've assumed that that tangent point is somewhere near the center of the Southwest arm and I'll show you why. 
this is the satellite view of the LIGO arms again. And this is the information, the elevation data that we got from the as-built drawings. When we plot that data on this satellite view, it looks like this. Now notice on the southwest arm that the two end elevations of 64.09 feet and 64.12 feet are very nearly identical. The center elevation, however, is about a foot low at 63 feet. That makes perfect sense if the plane formed by the two arms of LIGO is tangent to the WGS-84 somewhere near the center point of that west arm. Obviously, that does not form a straight line on a flat Earth. But it makes perfect sense on a spherical Earth. Let's use the old tried and proven 8 inches per mile squared and see what happens. At 8 inches per mile squared, over 6,550 feet, the drop should be 1.03 feet. The as-builts give us a drop of 1.09 feet. That's very close, 6 one-hundredths of a foot. We can do the same thing on the other side, on the east arm, and in that case, 8 inches per mile squared begins at the vertex. And over 13,100 feet, the drop should be 4.10 feet. According to the as-built drawings, the actual drop is 4.08 feet. This data is very close. Let's take a look at this in AutoCAD and see what it shows us. Looking at this in AutoCAD, here is the southwest arm. And we'll just have a quick look. Here's the vertex at an elevation of 64.12 feet. Here is the end section, the end station at 64.09 feet. And here is the elevation at 6,500 feet from the vertex at 63.0 feet. Now, as we already knew, that will not form a straight line. This is low by about a foot. We can measure it, actually. If we want to. 1.10 five feet too low. On the other hand, this is a straight line. If we replace that straight line representing a flat earth with this line, and let me pull this over here so you can see, this is not a straight line. This is an arc. It's an arc that has a radius of 20,903,520 feet. That's 3,959 miles. Now let's see what happens. The vertex end is sitting on the curved section representing the Earth. The end section is doing the same. But now the center section comes very close to matching here in the center, just as we found out earlier. What happens on the southeast arm? Well, again, the white line represents a flat earth. Let me see if I can zoom in a little better. And at this end, we have an elevation, the vertex end, 64.12 feet. It's exactly the same as the vertex on the other arm, of course. They have to be, they connect there. This end station has an elevation of 60.04 feet. And if we look at that point 
of 6,500 feet from the vertex where the elevation is 61.05 feet above mean sea level. Again, we're nowhere close to a straight line. Let's measure this one. And this time we get 1.03 feet too low. Pretty much the same thing we saw before. So again, let's go to this curved surface with a radius of 20,903,520 feet and see what happens. And in this case, it matches almost exactly. The difference is very, very slight from the end of the white line to the end of the magenta, 0 0.0194 feet differential. So if the question is, did LIGO take into account the curvature of the earth when they built these machines, the answer is absolutely. And for you flat earthers that keep calling the LIGO control room asking if the earth is flat, knock it off. Those guys have got better things to do than play with you. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And the next time a flat earther says, show me eight inches per mile squared, just show them that picture. Hey, don't forget to hit the little buttons down there. Shout out to the patrons and PayPal's. And I'll see you guys on the next one.